G'day ladies and gentlemen, just a few weeks ago the great people at Vice decided to put a group of anti-feminist and woke feminists in the same room. Now, shenanigans ensued. There was arguing, there was whinging, there was people pretending to be so oppressed you wouldn't believe it. Uh, but I made a video on it and it was good fun. And then, just a week after that was released, they also released a video with a group of men whinging and arguing about what it is to be a man, what masculinity is really. And in today's video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to watch that. We're going to have a look at that and take the best bits and see if we can dismantle or agree with their argument. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me on a journey to look at people who are much more insane than you or I. Vice Debates. All right. How you guys doing? <laughs> Vice invited male identifying and non-binary folks from across the country to discuss their ideas of masculinity. Vice invited people with dicks to discuss people with dicks. That's all you needed to write. My name's Krishna. Thank you all for being here and talking through masculinity, what it means to be a man, etc. We couldn't fit every man in the country into this room. Why not, Vice, you fucking bigots? To start, maybe we could just introduce each other to each other. And if you were to describe what it means to be a man or to be masculine, Oh, uh, my name is Tahoe. I'm a black man. Thanks, Tahoe. <laughs> my name's Isaac. I'm a white man. Great to meet you, mate. Young, being a man, you had to be tough. You had to be hard. And now, to me, being a man is a lot different. Now, to me, being a man is knowing when to be soft. Knowing that you don't always have to run the charge. You can actually... I sort of don't understand the definitions of, of being a man. I, I think if you're what it means to be a man in reality is having a dick between your legs, right? That's and being an adult. Uh, but I think there are things that are associated with being a man that are inherently male. Now it doesn't mean that females can't be brave and can't be tough, but for men, we've had to develop these attributes over millions of years just to survive. That is why we have, as a species, survived so long. Now, you could say that, no, no, that's incorrect. Uh, lady hunter-gatherers, they, they fucking beat off the saber-toothed tigers and um, that type of beat off, that's what I'm talking about. And then they stopped being so aggressive and we lived. You can say that if you want, but in reality, it's because men were tough. They were ready to lead the charge. They were ready to attack, kill, uh, kill or be killed. And that's why we have survived for such a long time. You look at masculinity, even over the last hundred years or so, go back to World War II, go back to World War I. Those types of masculinity, although they may have led to the war, perhaps, they are the only reasons we got through those wars. World War II, for example, if you go to D-Day, running off the boats there onto, Nor or onto the beaches, of Normandy, uh, I don't think if masculinity wasn't a reality, I don't think we would have done that. But that's just my thoughts. As a man, um, I'm non-binary. I still have elements of you know my identity that are masculine, elements that are feminine, elements that don't fall within that range. And I, I personally just don't feel tied to like the, the norms or the confines of gender at all. And you don't have to, mate. This is the whole thing with this gender debate and like how people spend all of their time trying so hard to be one thing or the other, or they have to be gender non-conforming and they try very hard to fit into that gender non-conforming, uh, conforming, if you know what I mean. I think you just wake up and just do your best every day. Do you have to be labeled every day? Just do your thing, mate. If you want to wear a dress, cool, whatever. But why do you need all these labels? That's what I just don't get about that. I feel like you'd be a lot happier if you didn't obsess over these things. That's what I'm saying. My take on masculinity is, is not about talking as much as doing. I think at its, at its core, a man has to be efficient, competent, and be willing to do what it takes for, for themselves and their, and their loved ones. I think this is the thing. It's not saying that women can't do these things. It's that men respect other men who do these things. Maybe that is the more, uh, the better way to identify or describe what someone is when they're masculine. They're doing these things that we as men see as beneficial things to do. And women may have the same feelings about being feminine. They might look at other women and say, oh, that's a very feminine thing to do. That's something I like and it's feminine. And I see that as a feminine trait. It's the same thing with masculine men. Maybe we look at other masculine men and go, yeah, I, I admire that or maybe I change that. It's all to do with how we feel about ourselves and the relationship that we have with our gender. But of course, with these type of debates, 
you often hear people argue back, oh, what, women can't do that? Women won't do that? No, it's just how we feel as men, all right? No penis, no opinion. I was not always a good man. I was not always what you would call a healthy masculine man. And so... Fucking old mate straight out of Yellowstone here. Casey Barker. Identified five points that I think make a truly masculine man masculine. Okay. I think point number one is a man who walks with God. You lost me. You lost me, mate. Why, why is that masculine? Why is walking with God masculine? Point number three, which is a masculine man is self-sacrificing. So someone who is willing to sacrifice for point four, the people that he leads, a true man is a leader. And number five, a masculine man is never a coward. I agree with all of those things. I agree with all of those things, except for the walking with God. I think all of those things are really important things if you want to be seen as a good dude, a good man. You need to be able to sacrifice for your entire family. You want to be, if there's four people in your family, you want to be the fourth most valued. You want to be the fourth most important and put everyone else in front of you. I think that's really important. I don't know where the walking with God comes into it, but I guess that's just sort of his take on it. Andre. Hey, what's up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, men, 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 men. Uh, Did fucking Andre just get out of bed? Wake up, you dickhead. Uh, I think uh, my idea of a real man is, uh, you know, someone that gets the job done, you know, and um, provides and all that. Fucking who put this prick on the panel? This is terrible. All that. I don't even know what that means anymore, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's changing every day. Jeez, thanks for the insight, dickhead. Moving on. Is there a crisis in masculinity? And if so, like, what is that crisis? Is there a crisis in masculinity? I think yes and no. Maybe at the micro level, not really. Like, we just live our day-to-day uh, -day lives. But at the macro level, maybe. A lot of men are feeling very lost in this world, particularly in a world where they're blamed for everything. You see anything, like even like Jacinda Ardern, the New Zealand Prime Minister, she resigned last week. Why? Because she was burnt out. Why was she burnt out? Because men. Men were the problem because she's a mother and she has to do all the work at home, even though they didn't really ask her about her own home life. Maybe the dude does all the work. Who knows? But men got the blame for that. If someone is sexually assaulted, who gets the blame? All men. If something, if anything bad happens, men get the blame. And this is where people feel lost. They want to be men. They want to be masculine, but they also don't want to be attacked and targeted unfairly. That is where we're at. And for some people, that's a crisis. The be a man, boys don't cry, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And I, I think that's actually one of the reasons why we see it as, as a crisis, because we're actually trying to redefine what it means to be a man, and none of us have any idea. Uh, I don't think anyone has an idea. I think there's, there's some values that you hold tightly, and I think some values were held by previous generations, and some will be uh, held by generations in the future. And I think the best way to do that is take the best from everyone and put it together and that is what you should aim for as a man. It doesn't mean this is what real men are. It's sort of a guide. If you're a young guy growing up, if you're a, or if you're a mid, in your mid-20s or mid-30s and you're like, I'm a bit lost, this is the guide for you to be a better version of yourself. You don't want to understand as a man the best way to be feminine or be a woman because that's not you. You want to find out the best way to be a masculine version of yourself because you're going to have all of these things that you have to face in your life, all of these problems, all these issues that usually only face men. And if you don't understand what it's like to be a good man, then you may struggle to do those. I think that historically being a man was rooted in patriarchy and misogyny. And now we realize how harmful that has been over the years. Um, and so we don't really know how to define where we're supposed to be. I mean, he's not overly wrong. Let's think back to our grandfathers and great grandfathers, maybe even the generation before that. Women were treated absolutely terrible, poorly, disgusting. And, and thankfully, it's not like that today at all. It's no longer the norm to just scream at your wife or hit your wife and thank fuck for that. We are past that. There's no shouting at your wife to stay in the kitchen and you must do this, you must do that, you're the woman. Well, in most parts of the world, shout out to the Taliban, you pricks. You know, I was what you would call a toxic masculine male growing up. And uh, I had good men that sewed into me, you know, they gave me good advice, but I never found manhood and I never understood my place as a man until one day I humbled myself and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. God, shut the fuck up. But I think when he refers to toxic masculinity here, he's talking about younger men. And I think when you start to look at younger people in general, male or female or non-binary, 
They do dumb things. They do shit things. Usually they're not as good as the people that they will become. And maybe it's not a toxic masculinity trait or a toxic femininity trait. It's just a trait of being a dead shit. But of course, there's always those ones who never grow up and they continue to act like that. And that is probably why men get a bad rap. And some women get a bad rap too. Can That's you define can you me. define toxic masculinity? Like I would say toxic mean? masculinity is like what he was just saying, where you're using that 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 leadership role or that aggressive nature in a harmful way to harm other people to get your way. It's I agree somewhat. But is that toxic masculinity or is that just you being a toxic piece of shit? If you're an angry, violent, shitty person, does your gender even matter? You're just a bad egg, mate. I think everybody sort of has a different definition of toxic masculinity. I don't find masculinity toxic in and of itself, but I do believe in bad men and bad men exist. Completely agree. This is what this all boils down to. This narrative that men are evil, inherently evil. It affects young boys, it affects young men, older men, all men. And the media, both social media and the mainstream media, they refuse to accept that this is their narrative. They refuse to accept that this is what they're pushing forward. And they refuse to accept that, no, it's not men, it's not women, it's just that bad people exist. Because I think a lot of what we think of masculinity is tied into patriarchy, right? Which is right. to say, like, for the longest period of human history, like, men dominated women and got the lion's share of stuff. No doubt, that's something we've seen through recent history and even ancient history. But masculinity led us through two world wars. And sure, maybe some of those uh, conflicts were caused by toxically masculine people. But do you think if Hitler was born female, maybe uh, she wouldn't have gone after the Jews and tried to exterminate them? Probably not. Female Hitler probably just would have talked shit about them behind their back until they developed emotional distress. Point being, some of the byproducts of masculinity, which may even be toxic, are by and large disappearing. And, and that's a great thing. But is that because we are calling it out or we are just evolving as people? Maybe we are better people than our fathers and our grandfathers. However, in the same vein, we're not just losing toxic things, we're also losing positive things as well. The background of this is that we are saying that gender is this like real thing that has real ideas and implications. And gender's a real thing. That's ridiculous. That's insane. Well, I think that it kind of becomes like irrelevant whether or not we attribute like having like a good ethical compass to being like masculine. Attributing that to like the gender constructs which we have made up, which are like somewhat pointless, like kind of just feed into needless roles that uphold the patriarchy without even knowing it. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. There is a difference between saying that Good men protect their families. Good men are leaders. Good men are proud. Good men do this, that, and the other. There's a difference between saying that and saying only men can do this and only men can do that. That is the difference here. To reiterate, we are talking about what we as men see as good examples of what we want to be. That is what a real man is. In reality, I think that the more you look under things as a microscope and try to dissect them, the more everything just gets insane. But pay attention because the next part of this debate is important. Maybe something we learned from our dads too. Tell me about your dad. I'm um, a first generation kid. My dad is from Guyana. Um, grew up in very humble beginnings, poor family. First time I remember my dad telling me he loved me was when I was 17. And he was like saying like he was proud of me because um, I was about to graduate high school. We emulate our fathers so much. Like to the point where I know that I, I've heard this on uh, videos when I've recorded a video and I cough. It sounds exactly like the way that my dad would cough or does cough. It's very, very strange. So I have for some reason emulated that to the point where I copy the exact same, uh, the tone and the sound of his cough. So it would stand to reason that I'd also copy his mannerisms or maybe the way he thinks about things or maybe the way he speaks to his kids. If your father doesn't tell you that he loves you, Chances are you won't say that to your son. You won't show vulnerability. You won't show how much love you have for someone or someone else in the family. And that's bad. And also it follows suit when it comes to negative things like violence or abuse, that type of horrible shit. It flows through generations. And the only way to stop it is to put an actual stop to it. And that doesn't come down to vice or, or social uprisings or destroying the patriarchy. It comes down to individuals. It's up to you whether or not you make a change emotionally abusive young man in, in my 20s because I had an idea of what my wife should do. And it caused a lot of, of stress. Why were you the way you were? 
you know, I had a lot of anger. Uh, I had a lot of uh, pent up rage. Uh, I had, you know, some combat stress that I had to deal with also uh, that I wasn't dealing with because men don't show emotion. I mean, can you blame that on just being a man or is that just your personal um, feelings towards uh, how you display emotion? I mean, maybe. Uh, was he a violent person before he joined the military? Maybe. I mean, we don't know much about this guy, but what I can say from just seeing that is yes, men do often have trouble displaying emotions and it depends on the environment they're in. If they're in a loving and caring environment with a lot of friends who are open about these things, then they should be fine. But for example, if they're in Australia, they're a tradie or they're deep in a football team or something like that, they will really struggle to put those emotions out there and they will harbor those and it will cause them to eventually self-destruct. But men do cry. I've cried, believe it or not. And men do have problems with anxiety and depression and PTSD. I don't think we're in the same position as we were though. Many moons ago, we were in the position where we said, hey, men need to admit when they've got a problem. Men need to talk. I think men are talking, but what they're not doing is actually getting help. They're not going and getting if they need therapy. They're not doing that. They're not sticking with it. They're not getting if they need it, medication and not sticking with it. They're not doing the things to actually fix the problem. They're addressing it. They're admitting they're having a problem, but they're not taking that final step to sorting out whatever the issue may be. We're talking about it. We know men cry, but men don't fix the issues. And I know a lot of people are like, medication, why would you bring that up? Listen, taking medication for anxiety, depression, PTSD is better than being dead. So you may think don't take medication and you may well be right, but it's better than being dead. Constructed this entire society to benefit us. Break it down, like what privileges exactly? Like we talk about the wage gap. Come on, bros. You know the wage gap's not real. Or if you look at Roe versus Wade, men controlling women's bodies. Sure. And that's not good either. But there were women on that panel that voted for that as well. Mate, this is just, you're picking and choosing very interesting feminist talking points to base your entire argument on. Particularly things like the wage gap that have been debunked a thousand times. I think when you talk about like incarceration rates and things like that, like, like things that men are a victim of, I think that it's important to like recognize, like I don't think that men are oppressed solely on the grounds that they're men. I think that men like experience oppression based on like the intersections of their identities. I don't understand six of those words, but here's the thing. Men have privileges, yes. Women have privileges, yes. Non-binary people have privileges, yes. They probably get a blue tick on Instagram quicker than someone else. My point is we all have privileges, but we also have things that uh, in their words would oppress them or would cause them difficulty in their lives. It's just part of being human. We're not all equal. We're not all built the same. And this whole thing that we're all equal and we're all exactly the same and nothing's different about anyone is ridiculous. It is not the case whatsoever. As for the whole Roe v. Wade, the abortion debate, I have nothing wrong in my mind with early term abortion. You shouldn't be punished by having a child just because you have sex with some stranger or some random or whatever. But in saying that, it is not just a few cells that doesn't really matter. It's going to be a baby. So you can't just go out there and celebrate it. It should be the last line of defense, the last resort. You should be taking appropriate conception. You should be wearing a condom. And I know in high schools they teach you, hey, you gotta be worried about STDs. No, fuck STDs. Take a pill, get rid of most of them. Worry about having fucking a baby at 18. Worry about that. On top of all of that, some men were involved in making those decisions about Roe v. Wade, but not all men. That's not men doing that to women. That's some men, <laughs> right? Pretty sure half of those people were voted in by populations and some of those peoples in those populations may be women. Even if there might be those privileges, there's also more men who commit suicide, more men incarcerated. As far as this bullshit that men have to deal with, more than women have to deal with, it doesn't just end at the list that he gave, it also includes homelessness, uh, more likely to die on the job. They don't live as long. Homelessness, more dangerous jobs, just real shit experiences. So yes, there are some privileges with being a man, but there are also some that are definitely not a privilege. I'm like, what do you want? They got like a checkbox, like, are you gonna pick me up? Are you gonna hold, are you gonna walk on the outside of the sidewalk? Are you gonna open the door? Are you gonna pull out the seat? Are you gonna pay for the meal? Are you gonna be interesting during the dinner? Are you gonna be funny during the dinner? And then when you walk home, are you gonna 
drop me off? Are you gonna watch me walk inside? And then are you- Just be a fucking good bloke. That's all you need to do, mate. There are some of those things that you definitely must do on a date. And if you're a young guy listening this or an older guy, and you're going on a date tonight or tomorrow or whatever, be funny, be nice, how hard is that? Be a good person, walk closer to the road so you can push them out of the way if there's a car oncoming or they're gonna get splashed with mud from a fucking horse and cart. It's a protection thing, right? And some feminists may disagree, but those protection mechanisms put in place by society, a lot of women like. I think you just need to be a good person and eventually you will arrive at your person. But if you don't love yourself, if you don't look after yourself, if you're not a good person, then why would anyone else love you? You must work on yourself. I'm talking about you. I'm like, I'm so tired of like paying 150 for a first date and then you just ghost me. I'm, and the next week I'm like hurting for cash. I'm like, ah, hot tip right here. Don't take a girl to dinner on a first date. Take her out for a coffee or a walk or something. Just get to know the person first before you pay them for sex. Like going on a date and as the man being like, oh, this sucks, I have to pay. Or as the woman being like, oh, this sucks, I might get murdered. is like a pretty big, you know, yeah. imbalance. The fuck? That's the trade-off. Men have to go on a date and then they have to pay because that's what men have to do. But women have to go on the date and they're, they're, what they're paying is this risk that they might be murdered by this man. All right, I guess. Should I have to pay for petrol because I might die in a car crash? The fuck are you talking about? On a first date, should the man or whoever identifies as the man on the date pick up the check? Show of hands, who thinks yes? Should is a weird one. I, I think you probably should pay, but this is a good test. If she doesn't reach for her wallet, right? Or if she doesn't even want to split it, get rid of her. Get rid of her. She's in it for free dinners. Ladies, you've had enough free dinners. Fuck off. Me Too movement has given a lot of insight into what women are feeling in the workplace, what they're experiencing, how they're being abused and otherwise silenced, how institutions of power have kept them silent. And we've heard some really awful stories and some- And the Me Too movement, although I am, you know, I've heard some things that aren't great from it and some people being uh, accused without any evidence or, or, or turned out to be lies, a lot of the time, these have been great things that have happened and called out bullshit. Look at Harvey Weinstein. Without Me Too, none of that would have happened. And I think that's a marvelous thing because you should feel comfortable at your job, right? You shouldn't have to deal with actual creeps. You shouldn't. But, and I guess this is my issue with the Me Too movement, it's turned men into the enemy and they already were sort of the enemy for the feminist movement. But they really have cemented that role as the enemy. And that runs down into young men as well, young boys, primary school boys, you know, that really does affect them because they're growing up thinking that they are the enemy and that is a terrible thing to teach a young person, moving their way through the world, that they're always going to be inherently bad because of this one thing they can't change. It's terrible. The body, like pressure is to be buff, to like look good. There is a certain pressure, I guess, you can call it for guys to look a certain way, especially if they're trying to attract women. Yeah, there is. There's body expectations and some of them are unrealistic, just like the ones that women face. And I know you hear about the unrealistic expectations of women uh, that in, in magazines and on Instagram and all that type of stuff. But men face the same thing as well. Have you ever seen a male model with his shirt off? They're ripped, they're jacked. The vast majority of them are on exogenous hormones or they're on a certain type of steroid that is making them huge. And it's not achievable. The difference between the male figures that, that men look up to and the female ones is a lot of the female ones just have been like dieting really hard, right? And training quite hard to get a big booty or whatever, right? For the, for the dudes, they literally have to pump themselves full of fucking steroids that potentially could lead to death to achieve that body. So there's a little bit of a difference. Just eat less and squat more for the ladies. Sorry about it. And for the dudes, you've got to inject yourself with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of steroids before you get look fucking good. Sounds fair. It's just a health thing. Yeah, that's you know, the body and mind are connected. Um, if someone is strong, they're probably going to look strong and they're probably going to feel strong. So I think um, when you say it's a pressure, I think it's, it can be construed as a healthy pressure. Hey, get strong, be strong, because you're gonna be a healthier and more mentally fit individual. 100%, you should be strong, you should look after yourself, and as a man and a woman, you should be trying to make yourself better every single day and every single year. That's the whole point of Average Mark. That's what I'm trying to do with that. The series starts in only a week's time. 
Like it's all about making people accountable for who they are and giving themselves no excuses. If you don't know what it is, it's a gym series that I'm filming. And basically, once you sign up at averageman.com, you get a free, uh, well, you get everything for free. I'm not gonna fucking charge you. You get programs and meal plans and all that type of stuff. So you have no excuses. Get into the gym, work hard on yourself. And that's in all facets of life, not just strength and cardio or dieting. I'm talking about reading more and working on yourself and working on your relationship, making your yard look better, making your house tidy, all that shit. What is big dick energy? <laughs> people, I have told me I, no. people have told me I, I have BDE. Okay, let me just say this. If you have to tell someone you have big dick energy, you fucking don't. BDE is like just a, a Confident Confidence. man. I don't think it's an arrogant man. I don't yeah. find arrogance to be big dick energy. I find it to be insecure. If you're arrogant, you're trying to like, I don't. I think if you have to tell people you've got big dick energy, that's the, that's where the arrogance comes in. I, but maybe there's a difference. But if you really want to be a confident man, you don't have to have big dick energy, right? You don't have to say that you have big dick energy. It will ooze out of you. Your big dick will ooze, ladies and gentlemen. I've met some pretty powerful people from politicians to billionaires. And I tell you this, every single one of them that I've met have been nice, genuine people. And they haven't tried to outdo anyone else in the room because they know they're better than everyone else in the fucking room. They stand up straight. They look you in the eye. They shake your hand with a firm handshake and they are nice people. And honestly, I don't think that is big dick energy. I think that's just being a good bloke. And I tell you what, if you're not willing to be that person, if you're not that person already, your chances of success, I think, plummet. Domestic violence situations, like men are like the perpetrators of that by and large. There's something wrong with masculinity when it becomes violent. Fucking obviously. I also think because of testosterone and a number of different things, men are inherently more violent. Hmm. But being able to control it, that's, uh, yeah, that's we important. It's being able to control it. That's where yeah. the responsibility comes in. Yeah. I think. Agreed. So masculinity isn't in itself violent in the same way that a kitchen knife isn't violent, but if it's used in the wrong way or you lose control of it, it can become violent. As rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. I think that's a that's a big thing, but the, the key is to be, to be ready, to have the ability, the ability. Um, and, exactly. and also the humility and the confidence um, to not use it unless it's absolutely necessary. All right, me as a husband, as a man, and almost a father, I am willing 24 seven to go toe to toe with a killer to protect my wife, my child, my dogs. And I think that is a good aspect of a man, to be willing to do that, willing to die for the ones that you love, but also you don't have to go around shouting from the buildings how fucking cool and how tough you are. That's not the same thing. Humble, but also willing to do the things that you'd never want to do. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap on that conversation. I'm really interested to know your thoughts. Do you think they were spot on? Is there any questions you would have liked to have seen in the interview? And let me know in the comment section as well, uh, what you wanna see Vice do next. I'd like to see a fat phobic first fat people episode. I think that would be very, very interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you do something. I don't know, like it, share it, stick it out your ass, whatever. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Me dick stings. Toodle-wub-wub. Bye-bye.